Bonjour et bienvenue dans cette leçon. Hello, welcome to this video lesson. We're going to be talking about how to succeed in the foundation tier writing exam. There is another video on the higher tier writing exam if that's the one that you're going to be sitting. Les objectifs de cette leçon sont connaître les différentes parties de l'examen écrit, comprendre ce qu'il faut faire pour réussir dans cet examen, et apprendre un acronyme qu'on peut utiliser comme aide mémoire. The objectives of this lesson are to get to know the different parts of the written exam, to understand what one must do to succeed in this exam, and also to learn an acronym that we can use as an aide mémoire, a bit of a memory aid, to help us remember that criteria for success when we're in the exam. Que sont les différentes parties de l'examen écrit? What are the different parts of the writing exam? The foundation tier writing exam consists of four sections. Section one is a photo which you've got to write four statements about, and those four statements will be worth two marks each, a total of eight marks for section one. Section two is a 40 word question based on four bullet points, and that one's worth 16 marks. Section three is uh, a translation section where you have five sentences in English that you need to translate into French, and they're worth a total of 10 marks. And section four is the 90 word uh, crossover question, which is section four of this exam and section one of the higher tier exam. That's why it's called the crossover question. And again, that's based on four bullet points and it's worth 16 marks. In this video, we're gonna look at how you can get every single mark that you possibly can out of that total of 50 marks. Now the whole exam, all four sections are gonna be based on content and vocabulary and topics from the GCSE. Uh, topics that you've studied, but you won't know which topics are going to come up until you're in the exam And that's where it's important to revise all of the different vocab from all of the different topics as much as you can Section one is the photo question and for that you'll have a picture It generally has people in the picture and you need to write four short statements in French about what you see Each of those statements is worth two marks and to get both marks you need to include a verb Not just a noun. So if you see three people if you just write uh, trois personnes you get one mark, but you need to say il y a trois personnes, or je vois trois personnes, in order to get both marks. Arguably, they're the easiest eight marks you can get in the whole exam. So it's important that you understand how to get those so that you have the best chance that you possibly can at getting eight out of eight, which will help you if you drop a few marks on the other sections. You can mention the weather, what people are wearing, their emotions, or who's in the photos. So if you get stuck, there's always going to be something you can say. You could say il y a du soleil, Il pleut, um, il a les yeux marrons. You can make it up to some extent as long as it's feasibly correct, that's fine. But you won't get marks for saying what's not in the photo, or saying j'aime la photo, or giving your opinion of the photo itself. Now we'll look at a quick example. If this were the photo that we were confronted with in section one of the exam, this is what it looks like 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, and they're worth two marks each. So we look at this picture, there's quite a lot we could say, but we could say Il y a trois personnes, or je vois trois personnes. Ils sont dans un café, they're in a coffee shop or a cafeteria. Le garçon joue de la guitare. The boy is playing the guitar, or the man's playing the guitar. Ils sont heureux. They are happy, or you could even write Je pense qu'ils sont heureux. I think that they are happy. For section two, you need to answer the 40 word question and you need to make sure you answer all aspects of the question, which means writing about all four bullet points. You don't need to write the same amount for each bullet point, but make sure you mention every single one. To ensure you do this, first you need to work out what the bullet points mean and what tenses they're asking you to use to respond. Make sure you refer to at least three time frames, for example, past, present and future, and that you include a couple of opinions. It might be that the bullet points ask you specifically to talk about something in the past, like your birthday last year, or something in the future, like your birthday next year, but sometimes it will only ask you something in the past and the rest will be in the present tense. So you need to look for sneaky ways to uh, sneak in there an extra future tense or a past tense. And it's always good practice to make sure you give reasons or justifications for your opinions as well. The 40 word question is worth 16 marks in total and they're split into content and language. You can get up to 10 marks for content and 6 marks for the quality of your language. All of the bullet points need to be covered, but as I said, not necessarily equally, 
and anything irrelevant, anything that's not in any way relevant to any of the bullet points will not get you any extra marks for content. It will be completely ignored by the examiner for content, but any mistakes you make in that irrelevant writing can bring you down on the quality of your language. So it's important to stay um, focused on those four bullet points. Missing even just one of those bullet points will cap your content marks, even if what you've written is fantastic for the rest. To get nine or 10 marks out of 10, you need to make sure you mention all four bullet points. If you just mention three and you don't quite mention uh, one of them, then that's going to limit your mark uh, in the band five to eight. So the most you could possibly get out of 10 would be eight. If you only mention two bullet points, that will get you no more than four marks. And finally, only mentioning one bullet point will get you somewhere between one and two marks out of 10 for content. Section three is the translation task. And for this, you need to translate five sentences from English into French, and they'll be based on the content from the GCSE themes. The marks for the question are split into two categories, conveying key messages, which means you're getting the messages across, maybe not perfectly, and application of grammatical knowledge of language and structures, which is a long-winded way of saying you know the vocabulary and you know the grammar. To get top marks on section three, you need to translate every single part of the sentences. You need to ensure you use the right tenses, the right verb endings, and that your adjectives agree with the nouns they're describing. If you miss out a chunk of the translation of one of the translations because you're not sure of the whole sentence, the examiner will have to consider that had you have tried that, you would have got it seriously wrong and made major errors. Uh, so it's always better to have a go and make a couple of minor errors because you, you might lose a mark for language and structures, but you might still gain a couple of ticks for conveying key messages. And if you don't try it, you, you're definitely not going to get any marks for that section. This is the criteria for marking key messages on this task. To get five out of five, you need to convey all key messages. The translations you see on the mark scheme are split into 12 key messages, and the examiner will give you a tick for each one of those that they feel you've communicated. Now, a tick doesn't mean a mark. You can get 10 ticks, and that's four marks. 11 ticks would also be four marks. What examiners do to see if they're going to reward you the tick is they'll ask themselves, would a native speaker get the message? So that means you can make a few minor errors. You might get the spelling slightly wrong. You might use um, le instead of la. That's fine. As long as the native speaker would get what you're trying to communicate, you'll still get the tick. The other section is on application of grammatical knowledge of language and structures. And for that one, you do need to be more accurate. You do need to make sure your verbs are correct, your tenses are correct, you've got the accents on things to get five out of five. But you can still get a really good mark on this one by communicating the messages as best as you can and still making a few minor mistakes. As long as you're more accurate than inaccurate, so you've made less mistakes than you have um, things that you've done well and you've done perfectly, then you'll still get three out of five for this. And if you get six out, uh, sorry, five out of five on the last one, then that's eight out of ten, which is a really, really good score for section three. And that brings us on to section four, which is the main one I'm going to be speaking about today because if you can do this well you'll definitely do section two well as well. For section four you need to write 90 words and again there are four bullet points that you need to make sure you refer to. To ensure you do this first again just like in section two work out what the bullet points mean and work out what tenses you need to use to respond. Make sure you refer to at least three time frames again so a past, present and a future. You can use a couple of different past ones if you want. You could throw an imperfect tense in there and make sure you include a couple of opinions as well. Now, as I've said before, it's always good to make sure you give reasons for your opinions. If you can work up and improve your exam skills and end up sitting the higher paper, giving justifications for, the, for your opinions is going to be crucial to getting a good grade on the higher paper. Now, the first thing when you look at the 90 word question, the first thing you should notice is that you get a choice. So have a look at this question, 1.1, on the uh, higher exam, this is question 4.1 on the foundation one, and then have a look at what the other option is. Take a look at what the themes are, so this one's on the theme of work, it might be that the other one's on holidays or it's on school, and have a think about which themes you feel more confident with, which ones you've studied more recently, which ones maybe you've done a bit more revision for, and think about the register. So once you've picked uh, which one you're gonna write, have a look at that very first line because it will tell you something like you're writing a blog or you're writing an email or a letter to a friend and that should help you decide what sort of language you're going to use and how you're going to frame your, how you're going to open your writing. 
Then we need to look at the four bullet points. Think about what tenses they're in. So this one, the jobs or the careers of your parents, that's the present tense. We can use the present tense to talk about that one. The next bullet point specifically asked us about a l'avenir, about the future. So we need to make sure we respond in a way that means we're using the future tense, or we could use the conditional tense, in the future I would like to do whatever job it may be. The best thing is to reuse the words from the bullet point. For example, we could start off à l'avenir and then say je vais être or je serai or je voudrais être um, and then talk about what occupation you'd like. The third bullet point asks us what we would not like to do for a job. So that's the conditional. We can respond to that one with the conditional. And finally, if there are problems with unemployment in your town, that one's present tense. So these bullet points are quite good because here it's forcing us to use the present, the future and the conditional at the very least. But you can always try and sneak in a past tense there as well. For example, in the first one, your parents work. You could always say, um, now my dad is a plumber, but before he was such and such, or he used to be a teacher. So you're sort of sneaking in an extra tense just to show off the range of language you can use in French. Now it is a 90 word task, but you can be a little bit under or a little bit over. It won't make much difference. If you're a lot under, it probably means you haven't given enough detail and enough information to get the best mark. And if you do go over, um, it won't gain you extra marks for content, but it could count against you for language if you make mistakes. So try to get more or less around 90 words. The must-haves for this 90-word question are three tenses at the very least, and try to explicitly refer to those time frames, hier, l'année dernière, à l'avenir, so that if you get the grammar a bit wrong, the examiner can still see that you're talking about a different time frame. Make sure you give a couple of opinions, at least two, and try and give reasons for them, and extra details like descriptions, time phrases, or who you've done things with. The optional extras are other people's opinions, so instead of je pense que, ma mère pense que, so talking about what someone else thinks, and extra tenses like sneaking in a conditional, or in this one where you need to use the conditional, maybe trying to sneak in a past tense like a passé composé or an imperfect. We're now going to take a look at how we can answer this first bullet point and work our way up the mark scheme. So the first bullet point from the example question is les boulons de vos parents the work or occupations of your parents. If you just said something like mon père est coiffeur, my dad's a hairdresser, that kind of touches upon the subject, but it doesn't really give a good enough response. You're only talking about one parent, it's asking you to talk about both. And remember, you can make this up as well, it doesn't need to be true. So we could extend that and say mon père est coiffeur et ma mère est avocate. My dad's a hairdresser and my mum is a lawyer or a solicitor. That would answer the bullet point, but we're not really doing ourselves any favours by not giving opinions, not giving extra details. So we could extend that a little bit more and give an opinion and give some further details like Ma mère aime son travail. My mum likes her job or loves her job. That's expressing an opinion and we're doing an opinion in the third person. So that's uh, showing that you can really use verbs in the third person as well. But we could extend that even more by giving a reason, a justification for our mum's opinion of her job. Mon père est coiffeur et ma mère est avocate. Ma mère aime son travail car c'est intéressant. So she likes the job because it's interesting. There we're giving further details. Now we could extend this even more by saying our mum likes the job because it's interesting. Mais mon père trouve son travail ennuyeux. But my dad finds his work boring. This is showing that we can use much higher level uh, language because much more higher level language because we're talking about what our mum thinks of her job, giving a contrasting opinion from our dad. So this is going to climb us further up the bounds of the mark scheme. We could then say something about ourselves. Je veux être policier. I want to be a police officer. And again, we could extend this even more by giving more details. Why do you want to be a police officer? Je veux être policier parce que je voudrais travailler en plein air. I would like to be a police, or I want to be a police officer because I would like to work outdoors. That would then touch upon the second bullet point. So it's kind of smoothly covering both of those bullet points. It's also giving us something about the future. Je veux être, I want to, in the future. We could even be more specific and say, 
à l'avenir, je veux être policier. To make sure the examiner knows we're talking about bullet point two now. And then we throw in a conditional in there as well. And at the same time, we're giving a reason for why we want to do that. Exams are, to an extent, a box ticking exercise. And it really helps if you know what sorts of boxes you're aiming to tick. So I'm going to talk you through the mark scheme that examiners use for marking this 90 word question. As I mentioned, the question is worth 16 marks in total. And these are split into two categories, content and language. Your content marks are a mark out of 10 and the quality of language mark is out of six. So it's really important that you mention those bullet points because the content mark is the, the kind of the weightier of the two. All of the bullet points must be covered, but not necessarily equally. So as I mentioned, you might write a bit more about one bullet point than another. That's fine. And anything irrelevant, anything that's not relevant in any way to any of the bullet points will be completely ignored by the examiner when they're marking for content but they will take it into account when looking at the quality of your language. So basically, it's not going to help you get any more marks, but any mistakes you make in that relevant section um, might count against you for the quality of language marks. So it's important to stay focused on those four bullet points and to not waste any time doing anything or writing anything that's not relevant. To give you a clearer idea of just how missing uh, a couple of bullet points out can really cap your content marks, on the mark scheme, it says the following. To get 7 to 10 marks out of 10 for content, you need to have all four bullet points. You need to write something uh, that answers those bullet points. If you only mention three bullet points, that's going to limit your mark to a maximum of 6 out of 10. Just mentioning two bullet points will limit your mark to a maximum of 4, and only mentioning one bullet point will cap you at 1 to 2 marks. So you could write 90 fantastic words in really good French, but if you kind of go off on a tangent and you only talk about one bullet point, you'd still get two out of 10 for content marks. Not including enough opinions can also cap your mark. To get into that seven to 10 out of 10 band, you need to include at least two opinions. Just including one opinion limits you to a maximum of six out of 10. So you could write a fantastic piece, you could mention all four bullet points, but if you only put one opinion phrase in there, you're only gonna get a maximum of six out of 10 for content. And including no opinions whatsoever could limit you to two marks. And it is easy in the exam to just forget about this requirement and to write a fantastic piece of writing about the four bullet points, but not put any opinions in there. So that's why, that's what this video is there to help you with, to make sure by the end you've got the tools you need to get the best possible mark that you can. And the acronym I'm going to teach you shortly will help you to remember to include opinions. It's also a good idea to get into the habit of always giving reasons for your opinions. It's not essential for the 90 word question, but in the higher paper it is essential for section two. So it's a good habit to get into. Other than the bullet points and the opinions that we've uh, looked at, this is the criteria that examiners use to decide your content mark. Now, if you look at that top band, to get nine out of 10 or 10 out of 10 for content, you need to give a very good response that covers all aspects of the task, which you will achieve if you write at least a couple of sentences about each of those bullet points and you stay focused precisely on what the bullet points are asking you to write about. Your communication needs to be clear, as so you need to get the messages across at all times, and a lot of information needs to be conveyed. So that's where you're giving extra details. You're not just saying the bare minimum for each bullet point, but you're going a bit further and giving some extra details, and you do need to express opinions. For your quality of language mark, this is the criteria that examiners will look at. So to get into the top band there, five out of six or six out of six, you need to show you can use a variety of vocabulary. So if the theme is on work, you might use uh, using words like a lawyer, a solicitor, and a hairdresser. That's showing that you, you know a range of vocabulary. Or in the example, I also said, I would like to be a police officer. That's showing again a range of vocabulary. Using complex structures and sentences, or at least attempting to do that. So saying things like, my mum, uh, thinks that her work is interesting or she finds her work interesting but my dad finds his boring, that is a complex structure. You're using a sort of contrasting statements, you're using the third person of verbs and you don't need to get it always perfectly correct. You can make minor errors but attempting to do those more complex sentences will help you move up the mark scheme. It's essential to get into that top band to reference three time frames. If you just use two tenses or you only talk about two time frames that's going to take you down to the three to four band. Again, you, these are largely successful. You don't need to get 
all of the tenses 100% correct 100% of the time. That's where your insurance policy is making sure you include phrases like à l'avenir or l'année dernière so that if you get the grammar a bit wrong at least you've explicitly really clearly uh, referred to a point in time so that the examiner still sees that you've used three time frames or you've attempted to use three different tenses. You can make quite a few minor errors and still get into the top band and you can even make a couple of serious errors especially when you're trying you're having a go at more complex structures and sentences. The key thing is that the intended meaning is nearly always clear. So if those 90 words, if a French person were to read them, they'd get most of it, maybe 80 or so words, they'd know exactly the messages you're trying to express. Now to help you remember this success criteria, all these boxes that you need to tick off when you're in the exam, I've come up with the acronym POPFODGE. It's maybe not the best one, but it's the best I could come up with. And this should help you to remember to use present tense, opinion, past, future, another opinion, and justifications. When you've decided which of the 90 word questions you want to answer, you should go through the bullet points, translate what you can, think about the tenses, and I'd also recommend you just write in the top corner pop fudge with a little um, box next to each of the letters that you can tick off as you're going through and writing your response. That will help you to make sure when you've written your 90 word answer that um, you've definitely done everything you possibly can to not limit yourself from accessing those higher bands on the mark scheme. Present tense is almost impossible not to use that one so that's one you can tick off very easily. For your first opinion you could use opinion phrases like à mon avis or je pense que to be sure that the examiner sees that you're using opinion phrases to, to really highlight to them that you're giving an opinion. You could just say um, something like être avocat c'est ennuyeux, being a lawyer is boring, that's giving an opinion, but be really specific. Say je pense que être avocat c'est ennuyeux. Past tenses, you've got options, you could use the passé composé, which is the j with a past participle or je suis with a past participle or you could use the imperfect. Now an easy way to slot the imperfect in there is to say something in the passé composé like je suis allé au parc and then to give an opinion a à mon avis c'était amusant. Future tenses you've got two you could choose from the near future which is the uh, verb aller plus an infinitive like je vais aller, je vais manger or the simple future, j'écouterai, j'irai. Now an easy way to make sure you use two future tenses is to use the phrase ce sera, it will be. So you could use the near future tense like uh, à l'avenir, je vais être policier, in the future I'm going to be a police officer, et ce sera fantastique, and it will be fantastic. That way you're giving an opinion and you're also showing the examiner you can use two future tenses. For your second opinion phrase, instead of repeating the same ones, à mon avis, je pense que, je crois que, show greater variety of language, uh, the best thing is to use the phrase je dirais que, because that means I would say that, which is a conditional phrase. So again, it's showing the examiner not just that you're giving another opinion, but you're doing it using another tense. So you've got a really broad knowledge of the French language. And then lastly, you could give an opinion. Uh, something that someone else thinks, selon ma mère, according to my mum, or selon mes amis, according to my friends, uh, they think that such and such. So you're using the third person. And finally, making sure you've got your justification. So when you've used your opinion phrase, you've given an opinion, you always follow it up with a car or pas que, and then a reason. It doesn't need to be a really long reason. It could just be something quite simple. It could just be pas que c'est with an adjective. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's been useful. So the next steps you might want to take are to practice, practice, practice. It's true that practice makes perfect and exam writing skills are something that you need to develop if you're going to do really well in a writing exam. You can have really great French, but if you don't know what's expected of you in the exam and you don't know what the examiner is going to be using to decide which marks to give you, then you might not you know, shine as well as you possibly could. So it's important to use that acronym when you're writing these sorts of exam responses to make sure you're ticking all the right boxes. 
And maybe throughout this video you've thought of some aspects of that acronym, perhaps some tenses that you're not so confident with. So hopefully that's allowed you to identify some areas for improvement that you can go away and revise.